Let me introduce our third author in the Author Speak series. A management graduate from Singapore, he has more than a decade's worth of corporate experience working with some of India's most renowned companies. Both his books, The Perfect Dilemmas and Love Party, have received rave reviews and have been hugely successful. His third book is currently in the pipeline for publication. I am delighted to present Mr. Zahir Chauhan. Thank you so much, Vishwes, for the generous uh, introduction. And I'm Thank you so much for being here. Thank you, and I'm delighted to be a part of this conversation. Looking forward for this. It's great to have you here. Thank uh, you. So, Zahir, what was it that inspired you to write? See, being very honest, I guess uh, I've been a storyteller since my childhood. Right. You know, and I've really enjoyed all my storytelling sessions in schools and colleges. Right. What triggered me the most is my teenagehood. When I entered my teenagehood, I've gone through uh, various experiences, you know, which is which are like full of twists and turns and which can connect with the readers very well. I mean, you must have gone through, you know, certain experience in yeah. your age. I've gone through experiences in my teenagehood, you know. So that's where the idea triggered of writing a book so that I can share it with various people, you know. And that's where I wrote my first book, The Perfect Dilemmas. Right. So I think it's based on my own experience that hmm. I've become an author. Right. Yeah. So uh, you draw solely upon your own experiences or do you draw upon your friends' experiences, the stories that you hear from your acquaintances or any ideas that chance upon you? What, what is it that... Uh, gives you inspiration what is your muse as a writer so as i said the first book was purely based upon my experiences my friends experiences because i've spent most of my time into hostels right and yes you must be aware that you know in hostels you come yeah. across various characters yeah right so i had lots of characters i've come across various characters so the first book was basis that i added fiction to it and that's how it you know took place the second book, Love Buddy, again was a mix of fiction and experiences. Right. But I would say in the first book it was 80% of experience and 20% of fiction. Right. In this book it was opposite. Right. Right. So I do my research on the concept and then I develop characters basis them. Of course the characters again are inspired from some real events or the person I've come across in my life. You know, and I add fiction, I characterize them mm. and then I start writing. Right. You know, so it's a mix of both I real see. experiences and fiction. Right. Yeah, that's how it is. Uh, so Zahir, what was it that drew you to the romance genre in particular? And you know, what do you feel are, uh, what is the uniqueness of the genre and what are the pluses and the pitfalls of the romance genre? See, what I strongly feel is that romance connects really well with people, with readers, because I believe in some or the other point in everyone's life, we have experienced roman romance, yeah. right? And hence, it looks very real when yeah. we talk about romance, when we talk about dating a girl, when we talk about, you know, doing a romance scene. See, scene, it looks very real, and that's the reason why I why I wrote romance in the second book and why I wrote romance in my third book. You know, and uh, talking about the plus, as I said, the connect is really good. Right. You know, people don't have to look anywhere for the it's connect. It's ubiquitous. Everybody yeah. can relate. Everybody can relate to the concept, to the you know definitions which we are using. Yeah. Now talking about pitfall, I guess. Uh, there is a very thin line between writing romance and writing erotic. Right. So when you cross that line, it acts as a pitfall. Right. So you have to maintain that while you write romance, right. you don't get into the erotic part of it. Right. You know, that's where you lose your audience. People hmm. will say, Are kya likh diya, yaar? Huh. Especially you know, so given... Absolutely. So yeah. that's the pitfall. I see. And, you know, do you feel there is any difference uh, with regard to the context and the audience when it comes to the romance genre in our country as opposed to uh, the more international uh, books that are in the romance genre. Absolutely, there is a vast difference, you know, because if you look at our social environment versus their social environment, yeah, there is a huge gap. Right. Right. And hence that gap can be seen in our writing habits, in our reading habits as well. Right. So they are far more advanced when it comes to romance and all, you know, we are yet to achieve that right. space. So while writing romance for an Indian audience, what are what are the extra things that you feel you have to keep in mind that uh, an international romance writer might not have to? I think the plot plays an important uh, role out here. Our plots, what I've seen is very generic. Right. Right. And their plot is on a different level altogether. If you have read books like Fault in Our Start, mm. Me After You, it's on a different level altogether. Right. You know, the way they design their plot, the way they characterize each and every person in the book, and right. the way they give the ending part to it, 
it's completely different I see. than what we do over here in India. Right. So I think we have to match up to that space, right? I see. So of course we still have a long way to go. Absolutely. But how do you feel? We, how far of a way do you think we've come? So as opposed to you know a decade or two ago, uh, what do you think is the evolution of uh, the romance genre and, and writing about love in India? See, if I look at 10, 20 years back, we did not have uh, you know much of platforms wherein people can come forward and express their views about right. writing or can write. You know, micro fiction was not there. Hmm. You know, 10, 20 years back. But now, since we have plenty of platforms available, be it social media, be it writing platforms, and the kind of change we are going through in terms of our mindset, in terms of social environment or cultural environment, right? I think. now we have reached at the place wherein people are free to express what they feel mm. on the other side people are accepting what we write right so that's a big change you know 10 20 years back if you talk about writing a uh, romancing which has certain sequence mm. you know people will say ki uh, yaar this is erotic but now mm. if you include that sequence those sequence people will accept it happily right. you know so that's so, the change right. people are people have started accepting the writing uh, so the growth of tolerance and acceptance absolutely absolutely i see so uh while writing romance do you, what sort of research uh do you think goes in what sort of research is required like uh certain actors method actors they uh, follow uh, mm. the characters that they set to play they put themselves through similar circumstances so do you do something similar do you shadow uh people that you wish to incorporate as characters or people that you've been inspired by in terms of your creative um um in terms of whatever it is that you have created okay first of all uh, while i write romance my books are not inspired from my real life incidents right. if i say that my wife will kill me yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. so let me make that official statement <laughs> right so having said that yes research is very important i do my research i don't shadow someone but i do my research uh what i intend to include in my books so for example right. if i mention about a place a city right i make sure that i visit that place i visit that city right. and then write about it mm. because if i don't do that my readers will not be able to connect with what i've written yeah similarly it, it goes for the uh, scenes also right so if i write about a very uh, exotic scene mm. people might not accept it yeah so i try and put the generic experience of readers into it yeah you know so, so it's not superficial it's not superficial people will say are yaar aisa to hota hai ha you know so that's the beauty of aisa it aisa ho sakta hai aisa ho sakta hai aisa mere sath hua hai ha they buy into it they buy into it so yeah research is absolutely important without research if you try and write something people will not buy it yeah you know so that's a one time game for you but if you want to be in the game for a longer run of time i think the connect the research is absolutely important yeah it's essential absolutely do you prefer love stories that end tragically tragedies or do you prefer the happy ending which one do you feel makes for a more compelling story and what do you personally prefer to uh, both watch or read about or write about see i personally prefer love stories with happy ending the only reason is people they they are able to connect with it number one as i keep on repeating the connect mm. word because it yeah. plays an important role yeah. into it secondly it leaves your reader with a smile yeah and that's the beauty of it right. why do you want to leave someone with you know pain, uh, pain <laughs> or why do you want to become a role model sitting that inhone book mein aisa likha tha i'll also become like that you mm. know it might happen with me right. so let's not do that you have the power of using your words right. so let's use it for positive spreading positivity So that's why I prefer love you stories. You prefer writing love stories Absolute. and happy endings. Absolutely. So is there a difference between what you prefer to write and what you prefer to consume? Or no, it's the same. Right. Absolutely. I see. And um, you know what? What has your journey of writing been like? See, I would say uh, writing my first book was little difficult because I had no experience of writing. So it took around three, three and a half years for me to write while I was in my college. Right. Right. but i would say more than that getting it published was yeah. a more difficult journey right you know you go to publisher stating uh, with your manuscript and straight away they reject your work yeah without even reading it because you are a first time author right so in india still uh, we have a long way to go in terms of publishing and all 
So as I said, writing wasn't difficult. Getting a publisher on board was yeah. the most difficult part, and right. which kept which kept me waiting for around four and a half years. Four and a half years. Absolutely. So the entire. I've journey. had rejections from each and every publisher you know in the industry. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, wow. But you know, then comes your faith, mm-hmm. your commitment towards it, your your, your dedication towards yeah. it. Yeah. And hence, I didn't I didn't give up, you know, about submitting my so work. Very admirable. Absolutely, and then. at one point of time i got a publisher and yeah. the rest is history for me <laughs> if not for anyone else but for me it has changed my life completely yeah so it was a, a period of 7 years from the writing to the absolutely, hustling about to get a publisher absolutely absolutely i started writing my book in 2005 6 5, and 6. i got it published in 2015 oh wow <laughs> so more than 6 like 7 almost years almost a decade almost a decade absolutely wow. and uh, how is it going now currently is a So after my first book, जिन जिन पब्लिशर से रिजेक्शन आया था दे गॉट बैक मी सेटिंग दैट कैन बी पब्लिश योर सेकेंड बुक यू नो एंड दैट्स वेर आई वॉज इन अ पोजिशन टू से नो दैट आई हैव फाउंड एन अदर पब्लिशर टेबल सेट टर्न सो फॉर द सेकेंड बुक आई ऑलरेडी हैड अ पब्लिशर रेडी विद मी राइट फॉर द थर्ड बुक आव टेकन अ डिफरेंट अप्रोच एज आई सेड अर्लियर यू नो सो आव गॉन प्रोफेशनल आव हैड अ लिटरेरी एजेंट हुज करेंटली पिचिंग माई थर्ड बुक टू द इंटरनेशनल पब्लिशिंग हाउस and that's how you know it will work now i see amazing so it's a journey right it is always growing always always growing so now i don't have to look for the rejections and all i don't see the rejection mail it uh, <laughs> you know my agent goes through all those pain yeah <laughs> delegation <laughs> delegation you know i just enjoy writing right that's it so uh i read about you and i found that you know you had more than a decades worth of experience in corporate india and i imagine that when you started writing you must have still been working absolutely so how did you balance your work with your passion how did you uh, you know not compromise on the quality of your writing see i would say i have been very fortunate about my corporate career because still uh, i'm into a corporate role you know and uh, the benefit of having into my corporate role is uh, i do what i love doing in my corporate right. role you know in my 9 to 6 job hmm. you know that's there also i deal with people they also come across uh, come come up with stories and all right. and that's how i enjoy doing that job I and see. hence it does not act as a barrier to my writing in so fact it, in fact a connection it in fact it's a connection it has always you know added some or the other point into my writing right so that's how i manage i manage the both plus uh, i don't believe in uh, you know following a marathon of writing hmm. you know i write one book at one time yeah so i give quality time to it i make sure that you know i give complete justice to the book while i'm doing my 9 to 6 job right so that's how i've been as i said i've been very fortunate managing both the work right. so far and of course in your corporate career as well the people you meet can uh, introduce you to new stories to new parts of life absolutely absolutely you get lots of characters which right. you can include in your yeah. stories you know so now from the hostels to the to the corporate <laughs> absolutely <laughs> yeah Yeah, hope it doesn't go to my boss now. <laughs> <laughs> so, do you have a writing haven? Uh, any place where you like writing? Any place where you feel the creative juices flow most uh, fluidly? Where you feel that inspiration just strikes you? So, I would say if you are an if you are a writer, you don't have to look for a place. Right. You know, it should run parallelly in in the back of your mind. So, what I do is I follow a routine, we on a weekly basis, wherein. Mm-hmm. Uh, in a week for certain number of hours i sit and write now having said that uh, while i'm traveling while i'm having an outing with my friends or having a good time with my family whenever an idea stucks into my mind you know i immediately record it on my cell phone right you know and then i go back and develop that particular point right so as such i do not have a writing heaven kind of place i can write from anywhere you know I see. at times i write sitting in my office at time i write when i'm traveling Mm. you know so that's how it is i see you shared with me earlier that you've always been a storyteller even when you were younger so uh, you know how, what was your first introduction to stories and um, what sort of influence did those stories have on you both in terms of what you like to read and in terms of how you write and what you like to write about how how have your favorite authors and your favorite stories influenced your style of writing See as I said I've always been a storyteller uh, that means I was always reading since yeah. from uh, right from my childhood so as like any other you know school going kid or a you know 5 year 4 year old toddler I started my reading journey with Champak acha you know and that's how I started reading uh talking about my first uh, 
journey as a storyteller i still remember i was in school probably standard 3rd or 4th wherein i narrated a 7 to 8 line story and i won the competition oh, wow. for that story so that's how the journey journey started yeah. then i was always an avid reader and all sort of things but when i started writing there are three people whom i really admire in terms of their writing and in terms of their plot characters and everything uh, talking about an indian author definitely it's mr bhagat right his stories no matter what people say his stories are very simple indian readers can connect with that mm. you know and that's how they sell like anything right. people buy it mm. people buy the concept right right so obviously the number 1 is chetan bhagat number 2 and number 3 i guess it's uh, america it's american authors jojo moyes and nicholas park right you know as i said earlier their way of uh, writing a story is completely different hmm. their characterization is completely different you know so if you ask about my uh, you know inspirations these are the three people whom i get really inspired by their writing style right and um, you know apart from uh, the authors that you encountered later on hmm. so how, how has like a champak for example hmm. influenced what you like to read and how have you uh, you know there must have been some uh, threads or some grains of inspiration that stuck with you throughout from from that from the beginning to where you are now so as i said i started reading champak aur uske baad laga ki ye to bada maza aata hai I see. You know, पढ़ने में इतना मजा आ रहा है तो लिखने में क्या होगा वाई कैंट आई क्रिएट स्टोरीज यू नो एंड दैट्स वेयर यू नो इट 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 समेर इट केम फ्रॉम देयर सो आई स्टार्ट रीडिंग डिफरेंट काइंड ऑफ बुक्स देन फ्रॉम चंपक आई मूव ऑन टू कॉमिक्स यू नो फ्रॉम कॉमिक्स टू नॉवल्स सो दैट्स हाउ आई डेवलप दूटलीस यस दैट वॉज अ स्टार्टिंग पॉइंट What do you think is the most special thing about being a storyteller? I think the most special thing about being a storyteller, a writer or an author, I it's you get an opportunity to create a world which only you and your readers has access to. Right. You can do whatever you want in that world. Hmm. And that's the beauty of it. The creative liberty. Absolutely. It's your world. Right. You know, you want to include this part of it you include that you want to include that character into it you do that you want to make your readers smile you can do that you want to make your readers to feel the pain you can do that with your words and that's right. the beauty of being a storyteller i see you know i i think i'll i must agree with you i think creative liberty really is the most special thing about being a storyteller because um it is the creative liberty of an author that attracts a reader be it uh, you know the romance genre of right. of envisioning how do people meet and connect mm. or whether it's the fantasy genre of envisioning entirely new races cultures like what george r r martin has done or what lord of the rings is doing whatever it is i think it is the uh, author's prerogative and the author's ability to create something that is new and unique that is uh, the most special thing absolutely so. absolutely so you know thank you so much and thank you so uh, much for having me here Vishnu. now we move to our last segment it's a short and sweet uh, rapid fire okay. so you know we'll just get started sure so favorite author uh chetan bhagat jojo moyes and nicolas park okay uh favorite book fault in our stars favorite movie don't say fault in our stars <laughs> <laughs> favorite movie okay it's before sunrise okay favorite song tujhse naraz nahi zindagi hairan hu main favorite hobby apart from reading and writing solo traveling <laughs> <laughs> uh ebooks or physical books physical books any day for the experience absolutely a book you'd like to adapt into a movie my next book not in our destiny <laughs> <laughs> um a movie you'd like to adapt into a book a movie yeah a, a movie that is not a book adaptation Mm. that you would like to adapt into i don't think so movies can replace books <laughs> it's the other way around right. <laughs> always and uh, you know lastly a hidden gem a book that you believe deserves a lot more recognition than it currently has i said i don't know of such books to be very honest with you anything right? you've come across anything you i think it's shantaram shantaram yeah, absolutely okay so i think that has the potential of reaching out to more people i see yeah So you know Zahir thank you so much for being here thank you so much for sharing your journey with us 
and it was a pleasure having you here. Thank you so much, for Mishwes, for having me here, and it was a wonderful session. I enjoyed the conversation. Thank you for your time. It's been amazing to get to know you. Thank you for watching Author Speak with Vishwesh Desai. Stay tuned for more such conversations and for meeting more authors. Thank you.